Tonight, a KUSI News special report. Global warming, the other side. And now, your host, Sean Coleman. Thank you and good evening, and we're really glad you joined us tonight. You know, it's hard to distinguish between what's true and what's not. Now, much of what you see on TV is great entertainment, but it's fiction. This program, however, is not fiction. It is true to the very best of my ability to determine the truth. It's a beautiful morning. First and foremost, I want you to know that I'm like you. I love this planet Earth. It's vital that we protect it with all we have. Clean air and clean water and preserving Earth's natural beauty, they come first and foremost to me. And oh, I also want you to know that this telecast is not about a political point of view. Here's what it is about, scientific truth. And here's the truth as I know it to be. Our carbon footprints are not creating any significant global warming. The global warming frenzy is based on a myth, a scientific hypothesis that has gone bad. Now I'm asking you to open up your mind for the balance of this hour to give a fair hearing to the other side of the debate. The issue is extremely important right now because first, the Environmental Protection Agency has now classified carbon dioxide a pollutant and a health hazard. This ruling will lead to major new taxes and fees on everything from heating and air conditioning our homes and workplaces, to the price of food at the supermarket, to the cost of gas for our cars. The EPA ruling may have a major impact on your way of life. Second, the U.S. Senate will soon consider cap and trade legislation that will also lead to higher taxes for fossil fuel-based energy and drive up the cost for food and clothing and for our TVs and our computers, everything that's part of our lives today. Third, the United Nations continues to work toward a treaty that will tax the wealthy modern nations, particularly the United States, to benefit the third world countries. President Obama has pledged 200 billion of our tax dollars to that cause. Greenhouse gases and our carbon footprints have become a key issue with our government at the same time that the science behind the concept is crumbling. So let me try to make it clear. Our carbon footprints are from the carbon dioxide released into the atmosphere to support our lifestyles. This carbon dioxide mostly comes from the burning of fossil fuels, such as gasoline in our cars, the jet fuel in the airliners we ride, the power plants that create the electricity we use for lights, TV sets, computers, air conditioning, iPods, and all the rest. Well, the theory is that this carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas and as it builds up in the atmosphere and interacts with water vapor, it produces runaway global warming. The entire global warming frenzy is based on that scientific hypothesis, but the theory is being proven wrong every day. It is invalid. It has turned out to be bad science. So let me explain why it's bad science. The hypothesis is that carbon dioxide is a super powerful greenhouse gas that will cause Earth's temperature to skyrocket into an uncontrollable heat wave. The crew here has tried to teach me how to use this contraption here, so if I don't kill myself. Al Gore uses this chart of temperatures and carbon dioxide from the last 650,000 years to show the correlation of carbon dioxide called CO2 and temperature. The data was produced by paleoclimatologists from ice cores drilled in the Arctic. Mr. Gore's basic point is, when there is more carbon dioxide, the temperature gets warmer. Mr. Gore and the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or IPCC, contend that CO2 is a greenhouse gas that traps the sun's heat in our atmosphere, causing warming. And they say that our carbon footprints are created by using fossil fuels to power our advanced civilization. So burning fossil fuels releases CO2 into the atmosphere, and as the CO2 builds up, it leads to uncontrollable global warming, with all the dire consequences Mr. Gore lists in his movie. But despite Mr. Gore's big, fancy spike on that chart, which is sheer speculation, and not happening, as his chart predicts, he does admit 
And the, the relationship is actually very complicated. And would have to be because despite that impressive chart that requires a lift to climb, carbon dioxide is only a tiny trace gas in the atmosphere. And it would require a very complicated process for it to have much impact on our temperatures. And there's another problem with what that chart shows. Paleoclimatologist Ian Clark, one of the men behind the ice core temperature and CO2 data, shows the big problem with Mr. Gore's contention that CO2 drives temperature up. So here we're looking at the ice core record from Vostok. And in the red, we see temperature going up from early time to later time at a very key interval when we came out of a glaciation. And we see the temperature going up, and then we see the CO2 coming up. CO2 lags behind that increase. It's got an 800-year lag. So temperature is leading CO2 by 800 years. CO2 clearly cannot be causing temperature changes. It's a product of temperature. It's following temperature changes. This is it, the basic scientific failure in the Al Gore IPCC global warming case. From ice cores to the complicated, elaborate, multi-billion dollar research projects and computer models of the IPCC, they have totally failed to make a valid, provable case that carbon dioxide is a significant greenhouse gas. Therefore, there is no significant man-made global warming now, there hasn't been any in the past, and there is no reason to fear any significant man-made global warming in the future. I am not alone in reaching this conclusion. Let me introduce five scientists to you who are renowned for their views. Lord Christopher Monckton. He was the scientific advisor to former British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher and is now chief policy advisor for SPPI, the Science and Public Policy Institute. The father of global warming debunkers, atmospheric physicist Dr. Fred Singer, a professor emeritus of the University of Virginia. Richard Linson, PhD, an atmospheric physicist and the Alfred P. Sloan Professor of Meteorology at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Willie Soon, PhD, an astrophysicist at the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics. And Joseph DeLeo, a certified consulting meteorologist, a fellow of the American Meteorological Society, first director of meteorology at the Weather Channel, and now the founder and president of IceCap.us. I ask each of these distinguished scientists what proof they have that we should not fear the impact of CO2 on our climate. In the period of warming between roughly 1980 and 2000, that 20 years of warming which everybody is so excited about, which is not an unprecedented rate of warming or an unprecedented length of time of warming, it's perfectly normal, but that's the period everybody says is to do with humans. And yet, and this is in the peer-reviewed literature, five and a half times as much warming during that period of 20 years was caused by a reduction in cloud cover letting more of the sunlight down onto the surface of the earth than was caused by all of the greenhouse gases of mankind added together over that period it is the question of what is the cause of global warming when there is a warming don't forget that the climate keeps changing on its own Without any human assistance, it warms and it cools, it warms and it cools. And in fact, during the 20th century, from 1940 to 1975, the climate cooled. And during the 21st century, that is since the beginning of this century, for the last 10 years, there hasn't been a warming trend. So the climate uh, doesn't behave the way in which the greenhouse models predict. So the evidence, I think, is that while the climate is variable, there are bounds to it, and uh, the system itself overall is quite robust. I've been studying both the sun and the earth climate system for the past 20 years. And my concern, especially with regard to the role of carbon dioxide causing global warming and climate change, is indeed that most of the alarm, most of the alarming uh, aspect of, of carbon dioxide causing all this disastrous effect are uh, indeed uh, do not have any strong scientific uh, supports. But mainly I, I look at temperatures and I uh, look at temperatures from World War II, the beginning of the Industrial uh, Revolution. 
And if you look at temperatures from 1947, late 40s to, to uh, the late 70s, uh, temperatures globally cooled. Uh, from 1979 to 1998, we saw a warming. Uh, then it leveled off, and since 2001, uh, temperatures globally have cooled again. That means in five of the last seven decades, uh, the temperatures have declined even as CO2 has risen. If these highly educated and respected professors are correct, and I have every reason to believe that they are, then Al Gore and the UN IPCC are wrong. That's an amazing case of science gone bad. And this program will make news as we report new evidence that the primary climate centers in the United States are manipulated.